Welcome to today's Bible study. We're looking at the fall of man. We've been talking about creation. And so, um, kind of the, the fall of man. So, where did all this begin? What's the problem? Well, let's look back at Genesis chapter 3, verse mm -hmm. 6. It says, When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. So we go back to, basically, it all started in the garden. Mm -hmm. It all started there. Well, Eve's failure in the garden is neither far removed or uncommon to us. So this is this is shared experience with all of humanity, mm -hmm. really. Um, so we should, we should probably slow down long enough to ask, so what's the problem? So first we should ask, what captured Eve's attention? You know, oh, most yeah. people are like, it's an apple, so what's the big deal about that? Because the same thing that captured Eve saw she Eve saw the tree was good for, good food, for food and it was a delight to her eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise chapter uh, three verse six. Right. So what seduced her was Satan's half truth mm -hmm. in the previous verse where he says you'll be like God. Mm. So if I eat this, I'll be like God. And if we think about that, Satan didn't actually come out and blatantly lie. Mm -hmm. He actually told a half truth. Yeah. And that's where a lot of our things come from is the temptation is it's founded in some kind of truth, but it's distorted as you look at it. Yeah. Um, the story of Eve was summarized thousands of years later by Jesus' friend John. We find in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, okay. it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. Because mm -hmm. that's the first thing she did. Right. Was she was like, oh, I, that's going to help me. But if anyone loves the world, for the love of the Father is not him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but from the world. So that's where we're mm -hmm. seeing where the problem is. These three temptations, fleshly desires, visual cravings, and social position, they're at the core of Satan's right. arsenal. That's true. And let's look at some scriptures. Let's, um, we can turn over to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And it read, talks about pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So if we look at pride as being the catalyst to sin, yeah. uh, we can see a lot that's going on there that it's actually going to come before a fall. And if we turn over to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12, it talks about that whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So a pride, prideful spirit it's going to lead to a sinful life. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we look at James chapter 6, uh, 4, excuse me, James chapter 4, verse 6, 1 Peter 5, 5, and if we're looking at uh, Proverbs 3, 34, it's not exactly stated this way, but it goes along the same, that God opposes the proud but gives favor to the humble. And then one more element of that is James 4, 10, where it says, humble yourselves before God mm -hmm. and he will exalt you. So, the opposite of pride is being humble. Being humble, yeah. And so we want to be humble. Well, we find that because of their the, the pride and wanting to to elevate themselves to the level of God, we see God curse Adam and Eve, both guilty of mutiny. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's right. It wasn't merely theft; it was mutiny against God. God's mm -hmm. wrath ranges ranges not for the loss of property, but for the full frontal assault right. on his position. So he created this universe in a matter of days, and the loss of one fruit from one tree uh, was hardly a damnable offense, but his concern was not trespassing, but mutiny against him and his nature. So we've talked about the fall and the pride that led us to the fall, but let's talk about our redemption. Let's yes, talk absolutely. about where God is going to take us. Let's look at the good news from the, good the fall news. from the curse. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 uh, says that no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not yes. let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. So God's not going to just let us go through something and face it without having an opportunity yeah. to get out of it. So in this story, so here's the good news, the two sides of the golden coin. First, our Creator sent his own Son to pay the price to remove the curse mm -hmm. that came upon man through Adam and Eve. Second, the Son of God sent his Holy Spirit to support us so that we can do better, 
than Adam and Eve ever could have. That's true. That's a good really. That's a good reminder that we actually have a foundation and are able to build upon it with salvation. Yes. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. That's all the time we have for today. God bless you. Thanks for we'll joining see you us. Next time.